Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Philip, and I'm a 22 year old software engineer based in Seattle, Washington, currently working full time at Amazon. I can't believe we recently hit 20,000 subscribers. That's honestly incredible. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. And to celebrate this milestone, I wanted to switch things up a bit with a different kind of video today. Instead of my usual uploads, I thought I'd do a Q&A where I'll answer some of the most frequently asked questions I get in the comments and our Discord server which is linked in the description for those that have not joined yet. It's a chance for you to get to know me a bit better and hear some of my experiences working in big tech as a new grad software engineer. Also, I'm just vibe coding in the background using cloud code to set up a way for you guys to book time with me directly on my personal website so don't mind the typing sounds throughout the video. Let's start with the first question. How do you balance work, life, and YouTube? Well, it's definitely not easy. On a typical workday, I wake up around 8 or 9 a.m., head into the office by 10, and usually stay until around 5 or 6 p.m. After that, I come home, cook and eat dinner, and then take a quick shower about an hour or two altogether. Then I dive right into content creation work, whether it's editing, script writing, making thumbnails, or something else, and I usually do this until about 1 or 2 a.m. After that, I try to take an hour for myself to relax, either reading or consuming some brain rot for a bit, before going to bed around 2 or 3 a.m. On weekends, I make an effort to really go out and actually do something, like hanging out with friends since I'm grass deprived throughout the entire week. It might not be the most perfect balance and there are definitely some days and weeks that go better than others, but it's what I found works best for me. What school did you go to? I graduated from Cal Poly Pomona in May 2024 with a bachelor's in computer science. There's a lot of misconception that you need to graduate from a T20 college to get into FANG or whatever, but that is simply not true. The reality is that big tech companies care way more about what you can actually do than where you went to school. One of the biggest advantages of going to a school that wasn't super academically demanding was that I had a lot more free time to explore other interests. At the time, I was pretty disappointed in myself for not getting into some of the more well-known colleges, but looking back now, I realized that if I had gone to a more rigorous or prestigious school, I probably would not have had as much freedom to dive into personal projects, take extra courses, or explore a few side hustles. Those experiences taught me way more than most of my college classes ever did. I noticed that a lot of my friends who went to more prestigious schools like UCLA or UC Berkeley were so focused on their studies that they didn't even have time to apply for internships or gain real world experience, which was arguably more important. That extra time really allowed me to focus on the things that actually made me grow as a developer and I honestly don't know where I'd be today without having that opportunity. How is the Amazon interview process? So I applied for the Amazon SDE Internship Summer 2023 position back in August 2022. The first step was an online assessment which was pretty standard and came in two parts with the behavioral and technical portion that took about 90 minutes combined. The behavioral section had questions around their leadership principles so if you structure your answers with those in mind it's pretty straightforward. The technical part was one medium and one easy problem if I remember correctly and I think I passed all but one test case on those. After nearly two weeks of waiting, I finally heard back from them asking for my availability to schedule the final round. The actual final round interview was also pretty standard, just one 60 minute session where they spent the first 15 minutes on behavioral questions and the rest on technical stuff. For the behavioral part, I really had to focus on Amazon's leadership principles and make sure every story I told tied back to at least one of them. The technical portion was just two easy leak code problems, so honestly nothing too intense. I guess I got pretty lucky with what they threw at me. After what felt like forever and constantly refreshing Reddit to see if anyone's heard back, I ended up getting the offer about two weeks later. From application to final offer, the whole process took roughly 1.5 months, and looking back, actually getting to the interview stage felt way more challenging than the interview itself. But I think that's just what happens when you spend way too much time preparing and overthinking everything, which could be good and bad, but it worked out in my case. On to the next question. Do I need a computer science degree? While it is definitely helpful to have a degree listed on your resume, since recruiters often like to see it, it is by no means a requirement to land a job as a software engineer. These days, employers care far more about the skills you bring to the table than the name of the school you attended. For anyone who is not able or does not want to go down the traditional college route, one great way to build those skills is through a coding bootcamp. That is where Triple Ten, our partner for today's video, comes in. Triple Ten is an online coding bootcamp that helps people from walks of all life learn the skills they need to start a career in tech. They also have one of the highest employment rates in the industry, with 82% of graduates landing tech jobs within 6 months of finishing the program, and 53% of the students are even hired before they graduate. So if you are serious about becoming a software engineer, a degree is helpful but it is definitely not the only path to get there. What skills should I focus on learning first? 
I know how overwhelming it can be to decide where to start, but I would focus on learning the fundamentals of one language like JavaScript or Python. It doesn't really matter what language you pick, just choose one that you're most interested in and stick with it. From there, build an understanding of version control with Git and get comfortable with problem solving and debugging. Triple Ten's curriculum, for example, is structured to build these skills step by step so you don't feel overwhelmed. They offer different tracks depending on what you're interested in, software engineering, data science, QA engineering, and even UX UI design. The software engineering bootcamp specifically starts you off with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript fundamentals, then moves you through React, Node.js, databases, and even gets into system design concepts. What's really cool is that everything is project-based, so instead of just doing random coding exercises, you're actually building real applications that you can show to your employers. By the end of their program, you'll have a portfolio with projects like a full-stack web application, API integrations, and database management systems, basically the kind of stuff you'd actually be working on at a real job. Once you've got the basics down, you can start adding frameworks and more complex topics. Do I use AI tools on the job? Yes, I use them pretty much daily. In fact, it's encouraged by my team to increase productivity and I lean on it for all sorts of coding tasks, whether it's finishing my lines, explaining some gnarly legacy code or cleaning up my functions. Honestly, I even use it sometimes to help phrase technical explanations more clearly when I'm typing up docs or messages. So what is the tech stack that I primarily use at work? Well, we've got a bunch of internal tools that I can't really talk about, but for the public stuff, it's mostly Java on the back end, TypeScript and React up front, and all the usual AWS services you'd expect. Do you think AI will replace software engineers? No, I don't think AI is going to replace software engineers anytime soon. AI is definitely making it easier to automate repetitive tasks and build faster, but it still needs people to design systems, make decisions, and solve complex problems. Think of AI as a really powerful tool that helps engineers be more productive, not something that's going to take their place. If anything, it's the people who use AI that will replace the engineers who don't. So how long does it actually take to become a software engineer? This is something a lot of people wonder about, and it really just depends on how much time you can dedicate to learning. With a program like Triple Ten, you can complete the bootcamp in just a few months. They focus on taking you from zero to employment ready by giving you practical projects and helping you build a portfolio that shows off your skills. The program is designed to fit into a busy schedule so you can study while working or managing other commitments. What's really cool is that they have this calendar system where you can jump into scheduled tutoring sessions or group work sessions if you're someone who learns better with others. It definitely helps you pick things up faster when you're not stuck figuring everything out alone. At the end of the day though, what matters most is consistency and sticking with it until you get there. Do you think it's too late to get into coding? People ask this a lot and my usual answer is no, it's never too late to get into coding. Tech is one of the most accessible fields out there. Triple Ten's bootcamp takes you from zero experience to job ready in just a few months with students from all backgrounds, teachers, retail workers, and even people in their 40s and 50s making the switch. If you're not sure this path is right for you, check out their free consultation and try the career quiz that takes less than five minutes to complete using the link in the description. All right guys, that's pretty much it for today's Q&A. There are plenty of questions that I couldn't get to, but I'll try to address them in future videos. Hopefully you found some of this stuff helpful and got some good insights. Before I wrap up though, I gotta give a last shout out to Triple Ten for sponsoring today's video. If you're seriously thinking about getting into tech but don't exactly know where to start, they're honestly a solid option to get the skills you need without having to go through a whole four year degree. And since you're watching this, they've hooked you guys up with a pretty solid deal. Use my code Philip to get 30% off of any of their programs. Plus they've got a money back guarantee, so if you don't land a job within 10 months after graduating, you get all your money back. Just click the link in the description or scan that QR code on screen if you want to check them out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. It would mean a lot if you liked and subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.